I am here to talk to you <coughs> about a higher life than what we know of, about a power that pervades, permeates every other power and about the world which is called as the world of bliss and joy. You must have heard about all these words before also. <coughs> But I am here to tell you about the instrument that resides within us, all nicely planted within our being, as clear as you see here in the picture, which is a living instrument which you can also see pulsating actually with your own eyes when the Kundalini, this coiled energy rises. We have already been blessed to have this ascent into our own being the breakthrough into the unconscious, to enter into another new dimension altogether in our awareness by which we really can find out answers to all your absolute questions. <coughs> so far in the ancient India, we had three types of movements. I don't know if you are aware of all of them, but we had three types. And the reflections of that were manifesting in that country Also in other countries, even in England, we have had people who have been very busy finding out the answers to many fundamental questions, absolute questions. So the seeking has been everywhere in the whole world. But as I have told you before, India was perhaps the best country because of its climatic conditions and because there was lot of scope for people to go into secluded places to find out the answer to their seeking. Today I would like to tell you the three methods or three ways we have been seeking and the results of that. The first one is on the left hand side, which you see, is the path by which <coughs> they had devotion to God, what they call the bhakti. They sang praise of God without seeking Him. They called Him, they asked His help. In the beginning, they thought that the greatest challenge they have 
is from the elements so they try to overpower the elements and in that overpowering of elements the movement was on the right hand side in which they used many methods by which they could excite or could innovate as they call it the deities or the subtle principles of the elements the first one was that of the devotees and second one that of the people who were trying to find out the way to master the elements the third one was in the center and there were two types of people who searched i would say the one who searched the another which incarnated on this earth to help and this was the evolutionary evolutionary path of our ascent the evolutionary path of our ascent came into light you will be amazed much later than krishna himself came on this earth even after christ people started talking about the methods of evolution within us so we should have no confusion about these three methods because of the bhakti of people because of the asking of the people the different aspects of god descended on this earth as incarnations whether all this i say is true is not you need not believe because i am putting a hypothesis before you and then later on you can find out that if it is true or not you have to keep only your mind open like scientist to know about now the middle path of evolution is the one that we are going to discuss here the one that deals with the mastering of the nature is the one they used in the vedas where they did not mention even the deities they did not mention anything about god almighty but only talked of the brahma tat the one principle by which all the five elements are governed and all those mantras and shlokas to excite the elements were recited just to get the benediction of these elements as well as the control over them so once upon a time say 12000 years back in india we had pilotless bombs we had instruments that could work out much better than your missiles they achieved it through this method of right side innovation when i went to colombia i was so surprised that they also used the right side method for that they used to also take a kind of a intoxicant which we call somras in india it was an intoxicant which would not give you a habit but would you take you to a state where 
you could understand that there is beyond something. You can say something like LSD maybe. But this LSD that you take is very different from the one they used. It was a, I should say, a holy thing which had something to do with God. Because whatever in India they tried to search, they kept the centrifugal force acting on them, which was the assumption that there is God. So they did not deviate too much from the right side. They did not go too far. As a result of that search, science came to us. It came through the unconscious, all the discoveries, but our, our awareness after all this world is one whole. Our awareness was tuned up to a point where we could understand science as a result of that kind of innovation. They mastered a lot of things and they organized many wars as we are doing nowadays. And in those wars there are descriptions of aeroplanes and all kinds of ayudhaya, they call it weapons, which are fantastic. But there was another movement going on, on the left-hand side, where people did not care for all these things. This was meant for the Kshatriyas, the kings who were, who were very ambitious and wanted to overpower the whole world. But the left side, gentry, I would say, the people who were dedicated to God, who always asked for the help of God, were busy organizing dedications and what we call worships, pujas, according to their own understanding. But the central path was occupied, or I should say the central path was looked after by two forces. The first one, those who were the seekers under some gurus who were realized souls of a very high level, and the another were the incarnations who came on this earth to protect, to save the devotees of God. This movement was very secretive in the beginning, extremely secretive. Only one or two people they would employ uh, to this kind of work. From the whole society, in one generation, you could hardly find five or six people doing this work of evolving people into new awareness. This I'm telling you at the time even before Vedas were written. Because the incarnations that were to come, who had not established, was kept as a very guarded secret. The reason was that if they had disclosed that these are the incarnations who are going to come, then the negative forces which were trying to pull down the evolution would organize a method by which they would destroy these incarnations before their coming. But still, as you can see in the life of Christ, that coming of Christ was declared much before Christ came in by the prophets who made prophecies. All these prophets belong to the category of the gurus I am talking about. 
So all over the world, three types of movements were on. For example, the scientist on the right hand side, we can say, and the left hand side are the devotees of God who sing the praise of God. And in the center, there were people like Moses, like Abraham, who came on this earth just to prophesy, just to protect the devotees of God. Now this middle movement of evolution today has reached its peak because all the incarnations have arrived now and have done their job within you. They have occupied their position within you in your awareness on these different centers. So the first center that we have here which is established in the carbon atom. Carbon has got four hands in the same way this center has also got four hands. You can see the four uh, sides of this center. That means up to the matter stage, it is even below that. Then the carbon started the living. This carbon atom actually ignited the living process in the matter. Though the time taken for this, since the time the earth seceded from the sun is very, very short. I mean, nobody can explain why, how it could happen. Some juggler could only do that. So this carbon atom started the triggering of living beings. Afterwards, we can say that the incarnation of the center, this being colored, center, which we ca call as the Nabhi Chakra, the incarnation started on this point, one after another, taking different forms of living animals in the evolution, like first the fish. It came as a fish. They say when Noah was having a bad time with the deluge, this fish helped him. They came as an incarnation, that aspect of God which we call as evolutionary. That came as a fish on this earth. And then, then it came as a quadruped. Then it came as a short man. That it came as a strong man. And on and on and on like that. Till we reach a stage where the top one, you can see, or here. This is the stage where Sri Ram, who came 8,000 years back, this was established within us like a milestone. They were the leaders of our evolution. They led us into evolution as well as they left a mark for us there. And they exist within us in that part. So on the right side, of this center, this is called as the heart chakra, as you can call it cardiac chakra, or we call it as ridai chakra in Sanskrit language. On the right hand side appeared Sri Ram. Now, why did he appear on Sri, Sri Ram on the right hand side? Because he was to forget about his incarnation. He was to forget that, in essence, he is the evolutionary aspect of God which is Sri Vishnu, who resides in the center here, because he evolved from there in different forms. So, he was to forget about it. He had to behave just like a human being, so that no human being suspects him to be an incarnation. He became a king, 
a benevolent king and an ideal king, king with all the limitations of a king and the beauty of a king. And that's how this incarnation came on this earth all, about 8,000 years back. <coughs> At the same time, when this center, which is the, we call it as void, but you can call it uh, as the whole universe, you can say. This was uh, full of people who were negative and were trying to destroy the devotees of God. Then the primordial power, which is called as the Adi Shakti, the primordial mother, she came at that center much earlier than Rama. She came there about 12,000 years back to protect these devotees from 12,000 years in 1,000 incarnations. Of course, I think there have been much more, but 1,000 are the main incarnations which came on this earth. As primordial mother, they came to protect her children, her devotees. Now the <coughs> Topmost one, we can, not the topmost one, but this uh, second one. This center is the center where the Vishnu Tattva or the evolutionary aspect of God completely manifested. The complete manifestation of this principle took place. And that is the principle of Sri Krishna. So Sri Krishna is regarded as the complete manifestation of this evolutionary process. But God Almighty, as we know Him, is everything. He is not only the evolutionary principle, He is also the existence on the left-hand side, and He is also the Creator on the right-hand side. But much before all this started, another state of awareness was there. In that state of awareness, the second center that you see here is the Creator's. He created through His powers all the universe, through all the elements in this earth. And on this earth, the, the cycle of life started. All these centers are within us. Now, last of all, of all, about 2,000 years back, came the greatest incarnation of Christ. He was the Son of God, the innocence. And He came on this earth. At this point where you see this red mark behind, in the brain, between the pituitary and the pineal, there's a very subtle center. He came there for us to ascend, to us give the knowledge of the eternal life, to give the knowledge that whatever you see on this earth is not the permanent thing. There's something beyond. And in his resurrection, he showed us that how we all can be resurrected. This was the thing, gate into the limbic area, what we call it as the Sahasrara, because it has got 1,000 petals. Now these petals, as they look like this lotus, it is actually like that within us, but in a sleeping state. You can see a candle. Now when the wick is there, you don't see this uh, form of the wick. Only when the, it is enlightened, you see them in that form. Now when you put 1,000 like that, they all put together look like a lotus. But when it is not enlightened, we only say there are 1,000 nerves. But when these nerves are enlightened, you can see the light. 
which is in different color. So today we are here to know that within us all these incarnations exist and the force that freely brought forth, really manifested, who lived like human beings and worked like gurus, that force which existed in this area, which created religion within us, religion as we understand organized religion is not the religion, but the religion means your sustaining power. You are a human being because there are ten sustaining powers within you. So they came to sustain us and to give us full idea about these ten powers and to establish us in our religion as a human being. So these gurus who lived in that area worked out the sustainers and helped us and this is one of the greatest forces we have got which resides within us and whatever they have said has a very great meaning. Actually we should say the main gurus are ten but there are many other gurus and these ten gurus would be described as Raja Janaka, then Moses, Ibrahim and in modern times we can say Muhammad Sahib and even up to Shirdi Sainath in Shirdi that force came in for a short time and then he disappeared. Nobody knows how he came there, he lived there and he died. Also if you know Nanaka he was also the same force, the same primordial master who was born on this earth. <coughs> now this is not a time to tell about individual people, but I think one day I will talk to you only on this subject of the Gurus. So these Gurus first started under the primordial master himself who was called as Dattat. And this Dattatraya is the one who is comprising all these forces, the existence force and the evolutionary force and the creative force, all of them in its innocence. I don't know if you understand it, but there's a story about them is that there are three deities which belong to these three forces. The left one is Shiva's force. So the right one is Brahmadeva's force and the central one is Vishnu's force. So they say that all these three gods felt that the wife of Dattatreya was a great uh, devoted woman and she would with her powers can curse anyone she feels like. So they wanted to ta uh, take her test and wanted to find out how far she was a devoted wife. So they went to her and uh, they told her that we want some arms. And in India it is regarded as a great honor to be able to give somebody arms who come to your house and three saints, they were dressed up as saints, they came on the door. So when they asked for arms, she said, all right, uh, I will get you some arms. They said, no, we'll come inside the house and uh, you have to become completely naked and then give us the arms because to become naked before a man you lose all your powers as a uh, devoted wife, as a sati. She said, all right, if you say so, I will do. And she started taking out her clothes. As soon as she touched her clothes, you see, they became small children, absolutely small children. <laughs> she took out her clothes and gave them the arms. So these three small children put together make the Dattatreya, is the guru, is the one who is innocent like a child. Innocent like a child who has no sense of sex. So we come to conclusion, a guru who has interest in women, a guru who has interest in sex is not a guru but is anti-guru. Dattatreya is the innocence 
of all these three powers. And this guru uh, was the one who's, who then had a big tradition of gurus. In the same tradition, we had many gurus in our country and especially in the area near Bombay, which is called as Maharashtra. They came as Nath. They, are, they were called as Nath. So the first one was Adinath, then uh, Dattatreya, then Machindarnath, then Goraknath, like that a tradition of these gurus came. But all their knowledge was kept as a guarded secret. It was a Gupta Vidya. It's absolutely guarded secret. Secret knowledge about Kudale. They never talked about it. They never told about it. Because they thought that just now let us experiment with it fully and then we will give some idea about it to people. But as you see, everywhere it happens, even it happens with us here sometimes, that we get people who do not get realization or are half baked and they cannot rise much higher. Then they get sort of, you see, very angry. Or sometimes they take this half-baked knowledge and start working on it. And they go absolutely wrong on this side or that side. All such horrible gurus came up in those days also, but they were neutralized because uh, I would say that people were spiritually uh, very, very sensitive. Nowadays, the people are not. They are very naive. They have no sensitivity. You see, from the face you can make out that a person is such and such. But they have no sensitivity left, you see. They are so much used to masks. I asked uh, today why uh, people cannot understand and why do they always have a mask on their faces. Uh, nothing is beaming out of them. What is it? So someone told me a very interesting answer was that because they listen to news and they see the newsman is reading it and he gets a lot of light on his face, so he has to keep detached from the news. He cannot show his any uh, impressions or anything. He has to be absolutely detached when he's describing some news. So his face is just like a mask and that's why it happens. Whatever it is, we have become really naive as far as spirituality is con concerned and the people take advantage of it, a full advantage of this naive behavior or naive uh, nature of ours. For this, you don't have to go to books, you don't have to go to any uh, guru for this. It's only a thing of uh, a society in which you live. We, natural societies have much more sensitivity to spirituality than uh, artificially sort of brainwashed, you can call them, or brought up in a materialistic atmosphere. They lose their uh, sensitivity to spirituality, which is spontaneous, which is spontaneous. Because we lose our spontaneity, we lose that uh, natural, we call it a sahaja means spontaneous <clears throat> knowledge to know who is a real person and who is unreal. So these, this force started manifesting itself gradually in the caves, in the very secret caves, where only one or two were asked to go there. And first they were tested very badly. In the, I mean, the way they were tested, some would run away. So for years together, they would not get even one disciple who was capable of coming into this training. And at long last, if they got one, they would work on him and then he may die without the experience. Then again he would be reborn, again he would die, like that it would go on for ages until then they found that the truth is within you till they completely cleansed themselves and they became one with the higher being within themselves. But this was achieved so little that you'll be amazed that Zain system of religion is exactly the same system is Avadhuta, which we call the Nath style, the same style is. And they say there have been only 65 Kashyapas, they call them Kashyapas, 65, just imagine, 65 in six centuries. So I think it would be one point something, one, <laughs> every century. So these were the only people who got realization. 
and it was a very difficult procedure because they would raise this kundalini up to a point and it would drop out then they would raise it and cleanse it and then again cleanse it and again push it forward it would be something like pushing a car which doesn't start you push it it comes back again it goes forward it then again you cleanse it take it to the garage you see it's no good then you take it again back wash it clean it again get under it and try to cleanse it again the machinery again it goes out like that it goes on and on and you get so fed up that you think better let it go back to the factory to be completely renewed then they made it again put it back and like that it it moved the movement of this evolution very very gradually and in this gradual movement they had because if you move gradually you see many things for example if you are now going on a bullock cart you don't have any bullock carts we still have bullock carts you see if you have to go to villages uh, you have to go by bullock carts and the speed of a bullock cart is uh, maybe 2 miles per hour or maybe even sometimes less depends on the whims of the bullocks you see if they sit down in between you can get down cook your food and have your food very nicely and then again get back into the bullock cart and then again <laughs> start moving it could be very very slow movement and then when you stop you see you get so bored of that uh, stay that you get out of the bullock cart you go around and see things and that's how they started seeing things around and they described them and poor things got sometimes so upset with it that they used to get into tantrums and their tantrums also are nowadays called as raj yoga i was so surprised that these tantrums were there because of frustration and because of tyranny but now today the condition is different because the blossom time has come i say the time has come that evolution has to be amas has to be amas actually this amas evolution started much earlier as i said from the 6th century when adi shankara acharya started writing about it. he was the one who proclaimed it who said that this is the force we have got we have to work it out now people talk of adi shankara acharya and not a word about kundalini what do you say to such a knowledge you see this is the basis the basis of shankara acharya is kundalini and the sthayi bhav is uh, the 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 emotion that substantiates it is the complete dedication to the guru but the guru is has to be a real guru not the way a uh, money maker or a what you call this womanizer and all sorts of things abuses which are absolutely never conceivable to a guru he remains absolutely away from this all such things are i would say these are meant for criminals or you can say i have no words but you can say horrid people it's not meant for gurus who are choicest flowers who are the best people that god has created who are the highest people above all these things they do not organize they do not do anything they just sit and watch and they just impart you the power by which you become one with god that's all their job is they are not uh busy buying you say aeroplanes and cadillacs and uh, some had some i was told rolls royce they are not busy with these gurus first took to sanyasa because it was a very intensive work needed very intensive work uh, in the early times they took absolute solitude as their home and they didn't have children didn't have wives nothing they would just dedicate themselves to the search this is very early i am telling you say 12000 years back but about 8000 years and at the time of rama all the gurus practically were married most of the gurus were married imagine 8000 years back in modern uh, understanding people don't cannot even conceive of a priest who is married they found out without the marriage the balance is not established you must lead a very sensible married life and they got married and they had children and wife and they lived in the forest uh, looking after the small children from the families 
and when the children came down there even the grandparents came with them because according to the four ashramas we have got the grandparents are after 50 years of age have to go to the forest to live with the grandchildren near the ashram and they have to look after the children and forget about uh, married life they have to finish it at that time at 50 a grandfather is really promoted and he looks after the children he is not bothered about his married life so much as the husband and wife uh, reach their culmination of beauty of their married life and understanding uh, from 25 to 50 years of age so we have a division that 20 till 25 years is the education system then the 25 years of life is the married life and 25 years of life is this life where vana prasthashram they called it where they had to live like grandparents with their grandchildren give gave them love and they looked after and also if they were not realized or they wanted realization they worked for it so in this system it was perfectly all right because afterwards the husband or wife died after that age so they took to sanyasa means they just detached themselves and rose high so the pattern of life was such that you had to achieve god in your lifetime you have to work for it and all of them aspired for it and they worked for it the whole life pattern was built up to that of course very few people got realization but they led a very righteous life so that they maintained it for the next life and again they were born next life they tried it from where they had lost again they went up and up like that that was the system of that society which is of course is now very much westernized and they think you people are much more successful in life so they are running after you and trying to become like you but this is what it was but we can see today that is not the situation we are in a very different situation it's a ghor kali yuga they call it where righteousness has no place if you do talk of righteousness people will run away like today you see they wanted to put up a, an advertisement for some university and the lady who has been there she was saying no 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 don't put self realization no then i said what should i put she said put something like uh, uh, enjoying you see all right enjoy you put. then what else uh, you don't talk of god no of righteousness no then should i say now i thought that you can enjoy and come to a discotheque or something like that? he said the way we are going to attract them and then every, every other person got fed up they said mother we are not going to fall at their feet we we need really sensible people people who understand their value who want to achieve something higher they may be few but we cannot manage with these frivolous people we cannot uh, do anything about these frivolous people let them have one or two shocks in life then they'll come to us but you see for a mother is rather difficult to think that let them have a shock let them put their hands in the electricity so that they get a shock and next time they won't do it you see for a mother it is rather difficult to accept such a situation but uh, it is so because we had another gentleman who was a hippie he came to me and i tried to give him realization this again he went back and he started his drugs and he went into that again very seriously did it he did it very well that he, doctors declared that he's going to die within 24 hours you see he did the whole job very well he had all the drugs with a name you could open a chemist shop you see the way he was and months of things he had in him and then he came to me with a cirrhosis liver liver see liver which was having cirrhosis thank god my husband was not at home so i said oh my get it and he was there still when my husband came next day he found him in absolute horrible condition he said now if you have anything to do with this young gentleman if he dies here the police will really arrest you <laughs> you will be in for murder now you please don't go in for that but we treated him and you'll be amazed within 8 days he was perfectly all right and he's such a great surgeon we today now he's in australia i always remember him and you know he was a professor of physics and he was a very learned man but he did all these tom fooleries uh, just to go to hell directly with a running jump you see and it was very difficult in the beginning to convince him but later on you see what he told me was more shocking because he told me mother most of us have to be that way otherwise we'll not come to you now this is too much for me to understand that that it should be so hard on anyone who are sick now you'll be amazed 
that the seekers who were there at that time are today born more in the West than in the East. You are real seekers. Perhaps you have never evaluated yourself. And you have lost that sensitivity to seeking. That's one thing true, because the way you have been guru shopping, one can understand that how could it be possible that uh, you have been going from here to there, not understanding it. But, you see, because you were seeking, I would say, because you were seeking, you jumped onto someone, you jumped onto another one, jumped onto third one, just to get the, uh, just to get the, what you call the feeling that you were seeking. And this jumping from one to another has really been very, very wrong. Because by that, you have definitely disturbed your Kundalini. The most uh, dangerous thing about these people is that they disturb the path of your Kundalini, which you will learn when you will be realized, you will know. Uh, all these gurus, apart from giving you diseases like cancer and all that, have been destroying your chakras, destroying your Kundalini. I have seen big holes in the chakra. I have seen burnt portions in the Kundalini. I have seen horrible distortions and mutilations of even the private parts of people because you can see on this chakra, this last chakra, which is uh, dealing with your private parts, you see, that they have really ruined you completely to such an extent that it is, I feel, is irreparable. But still, we would try our level best to work it out and to get it done. I would only request you to have an attitude of openness and a uh, uh, little relaxed, like somebody has an appointment, say, about uh, 7 o'clock. So he comes to my program, 6 to 7, Mataji's lecture, 7 to 8, third lecture, uh, 8 to 9, another lecture. Such a person is no good for such. You have to have patience with yourself and you have to have patience with Sahaja Yoga too. Because some people from the jungles and who are not in the open, who do not come to London or to America, these people have told so many Sahaja Yogis that I don't, we don't know why Mataji is giving you these vibrations, what have you done, all sorts of questions and they are quite jealous and they don't even understand how these Sahaja Yogis can raise the Kundalini so easily. So one can say that uh, it is happening and it is there, you all should have it, because you are the seekers and this blessing was to be bestowed, is promised, even in the Purana as it was said, that in Kali Yoga, those saints who are seeking God in the hills and dales will be blessed in Kali Yoga in this time, modern times, and they will be born as ordinary householders and they will get their ultimate truth. It is a fact. You have to see it, and no use, I was told some people are coming here for spying. I say, what are they spying? You see, this is for your good. What is there to spy in this thing? It is all very open. This is for your good, for your betterment, for your own life. For whom are you spying? What are they going to give you? Madness. They'll take away all your money. As a mother, I must tell you, you have to be careful. They may pay you little money for spying, but what's the use of losing your spirit and getting that little money on the false promises? Best thing is to get it within yourself, your own powers, and know yourself, and know what is your self-interest, and don't be just wasting yourself for all these nonsensical things like uh, crusades and uh, what you call a big um, stories about it. People have misused all the knowledge that was in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Vedas for exploiting others. It's something very sad, but human beings are like that. They are really like that. So we have to be very, very careful and we have to understand that we have to have our own power. What's the use? If I am very powerful, what's the use? 
If the sun is very powerful, what's the use unless and until it does some good to us? If I have the power, say, to move all this, what's the use? You must have your powers. You must feel your powers. You should be able to exercise your powers. That is what you must ask. This is the main theme of Sahaja Yoga, that it is your own power which starts manifesting. So, thank you very much. I hope the lecture was not too vague for you. But uh, today I was just thinking that today I will tell you about this uh, Guru dynasty, because uh, these, the, way, the way the Gurus are there by the desert, you must know that what is a real Guru and uh, how they came in and what was their job. There's one more point I would like to tell you that they have not yet drawn here, but here you have to There are the two uh, more small uh, chakras, one that belongs to, uh, which we call as the Surya. Surya is the, uh, means the sun, the sun center, and the another as the moon center on the left hand side. And these two are uh, governed or we can say is uh, bestowed upon by two great uh, people who are the disciple elements. And the disciple elements were first, were born to Sri Rama and Sri Sita as a love and kush. And then they incarnated many a times on this earth as disciple. One of them is, we can say, uh, was uh, Shankaracharya. Another was Kabira, uh, like that. Then we can say later on, uh, like uh, before Shankaracharya, they came as Buddha and Mahavira. Then Shankaracharya and then uh, I told you, uh, after Shankaracharya came the advent of Hassan and Hussein, who were the grandsons of Prophet. So these have been incarnating and they have been moving from one uh, side to another and telling people that this is extreme, leave it. This is extreme, leave it. Come in the center and be in the center. That has been their job and they are the ones who are sort of imparting you that awareness by you become a perfect disciple. And uh, this is a very important point because it comes quite often that uh, we do not understand. Like Prophet Muhammad said that, I am the last Prophet. All right, he did say he was the last Prophet. Supposing I say I am the last person to come here. All right, I would say just to frighten you that, oh, better take to it. Otherwise, this is the last time I am telling you. <laughs> but it is never that. Because when he died, he found out that, you see, these people are madcaps. I didn't tell them this, what are they doing out of me? So he said, I better go back again, and he came as Nanaka. And he told them that Hindu and Muslims are same people, following the same religion, why are you fighting among yourselves if they came for that unity? Then as Nanaka he came, so in Nanaka's system also, the Sikhism came in and they started a warrior class and this and that. I mean, imagine the Sikhism ended up by having wars within Muslims and Hindus. So, then he came as Shirdi Saina to teach them. Now, this is not a very important thing that, say, Muhammad Sahib said, I am the last. Say, he is the last. All right. Even take that position. Who are you to him? How are you related? Through what? What is your authority? How do you appropriate him to yourself? Because you say you are Muslims? So what? How did you become Muslims? Did you get your certificate from God? Like Christians are. You see, they say we are Christians. How are they? They are baptized. How? They go to church, somebody puts the hand. Who is he? Is he authorized by God? Does he really break your font tail bone? Does he really blesses you? He is just appropriating God to himself. How are they concerned with God? I don't understand. They are nowhere near Christ. I can see that clearly. If they were, they would have been doing something else. They would have given re realization to people. And giving them the second birth which Christ has told again and again that you are to be born again. I am talking of the eternal life and not this life of organizing churches and making property so much so that the half of London should belong to a church. 
Same with Hindus, another silly people. One good thing they did not organize it, so it could not go far. Even there is one of the Shankaracharyas, he is trying to collect money this day. I said, for what is he collecting money, this fellow? They said, oh no, he wants to, now he is trying to, you see, sort of uh, compete with your Pope. So he wants to begin with, he wants to have an umbrella of gold embedded with all precious stones. He is a tiny little fellow. I don't know how he is going to look with that big umbrella around him. All such people claim it's such a misappropriation. What is the authority you have got? This is something I can't understand. Everybody goes to theological college. How can you learn God in the college? What college did Christ go? I mean, of all the things when you have Christ before you, why don't you judge according to his standards? Which college did Christ go? Which theological college? If he, had, he was to come here, people would say that he is good for nothing. He may put him in the prison again. And in America, sure. Because if you cure anybody in America, you are in the jail. That's what it is. So, the whole misappropriation has been worked out. By this awareness, the vibratory awareness you get after realization, you will know that you cannot be misappropriated. By which you become that. Once you become that, then you can feel it. Those vibrations flowing into you, you can feel your heart emitting those vibrations because the spirit is awakened and you can feel that and you get that vibratory awareness by which, as you see on the hand, you can feel your chakras, that is self-realization, knowing about yourself and also you know about others. It can happen just in a second, in a split of a second. With some people it takes time, doesn't matter. I have patience, you have patience. I am only for this job here and I am going to be here for years now, I hope so, uh, for some years at least, and we are going to work it out. So thank you very much. Now if you have to ask any questions, please ask me for a short time because then we should go to the workshop. Can I have some water? Yes. Yeah. Little loudly. The, con the coming incarnation is the Kalaki, as they call it. Kalaki is the one which means Nishit Kalang, means the one which is blemishless. <coughs> there is no blemish on that person. You cannot put a blemish on him. If you try to do it, you'll be destroyed. But this one is going to come <coughs> just to let last sort you out. You won't have anybody to persuade you, to tell you that get your realization. Nothing of the kind. You see, he will just come as we have after the whole harvest is done, then the last cutting. He's just coming for that. He's not going to talk to you, he's not going to listen to you, nothing to you. The time from this to that is short. So you better get yourself in the proper shape. And don't ask for his coming just now because it would be very hasty. Just now, let all of you be there in the boat properly settled down. Let us go on to the other side and then let him come. <coughs> because he is coming with eleven powers, which is known as Ekadasha Rudra. They are all placed here uh, in the head of the primordial being. And he will be manifesting all these in such a tremendous manner that you would not know uh, how uh, people will be destroyed. And the destruction will be of the worst type that you have ever seen. So that's why try to mature, become the fruits and be in the kingdom of God. All right? Thank you. Yes, my child? Huh? Nobody. Huh? <laughs> I have no guru. I am a mother. I don't need any. And I have been like this since ages now. I am very ancient. That's my own. I have no guru, neither I ever had, but I have 
the guru i call him as the tatraya if that is so but that is also within me in my stomach is the guru you ask this question mother have you any guru just ask this question in your heart and you will know it. to know me is not so easy because i am very elusive extremely elusive person if you think see so just now you just know yourself all right when you will have that awareness you will know all right <laughs> because you don't have those eyes to know me ha huh. good question also who was the guru of christ who was his own mother so now no questions yeah yeah yes correct absolutely that's what yes very true yes no yeah oh so what is your question in this all right i will tell you one thing that you see if you go to these temples and places where you think that they are misappropriating or not now as i have said to you already that the job of a person who represents god or says that he is god or he has power of god within himself should do only one thing is that he should be able to connect you with god that's all the rest of the thing is absolutely useless if he cannot connect you to god then he is absolutely useless person for example we get a person who is who says he is secretary to the queen her majesty the queen then he should be able to get at least an appointment for us with us otherwise how are we to believe that they have any authority now if you say that people believe in things and that's how they do now you see believing into something has led you nowhere see it is blindness on the contrary this kind of blindness has led you to complete exploitation you have seen in our country or in anywhere you are completely exploited. you do not realize it how you are, how much you are exploited by these organizations which claim and appropriate that god is with them or sort of they are serving the god the only thing that they should do to find out the ways and methods of connecting you to god if they cannot do it then one should know that there's something wrong with them they have no authority over you can organize Huh. No not at all they can it's a child's play going on they cannot how can you say it's no but how can they you see you cannot organize god you must have authority you should be a realized soul minimum connected with god say supposing this is not connected all right with the means what can you organize it you better put it down there isn't it otherwise you cannot use it what else can you do supposing this is not connected with the mains it is not working that's all simple you try everything you do organize you organize a committee bring many people to plan it it won't work out unless and until you connect it so called so called baptism is useless but the real baptism is there the kundalini rises you'll be surprised this portion becomes absolutely stopped yeah just like a child actualization is the point if they cannot actualize it what are they doing is this like you see uh, you send an invitation to people please come and have dinner with us with us and come along and we have organized a very good dinner and everything you go there you find a very nice table laid down and everything put there you ask to sit on the chair and all that and then they say will you eat and there's no dinner nothing what meat 
They say it is very tasty dinner. You see, everybody looks at each other. Yes, it must be. You see, the one thinks that oh, maybe we are blind. You know, maybe that we are little foolish. We cannot do it. You see. So it could be like that. You see. Once uh, there's a very nice story about. It. It's known as punishment of Shahabesh. Uh, there's a very nice story about him. There was one fellow known as Shahabesh, and he went and claimed to the king, Pajai, 